The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to thee. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So in December of 2000, I was hired as the youth minister for St. Patrick's Parish. And I was hired for two very specific reasons. One, to actually create a youth ministry, because they didn't have one. And two, to have a small group of people, um, to put together a small group of people that would go to World Youth Day in Toronto in the summer of 2002. Now, World Youth Day, in case you don't know, is this absolutely massive festival and pilgrimage for youth and young adults. It happens every three years, give or take, in a different country. And youth are invited to come together to meet with their siblings from around the world to encounter Christ. It's a week filled with a variety of events, ending with a Eucharistic service on the Sunday with the Pope as the celebrant. Now, the week was absolutely amazing. It was from July 18th to July 22nd. Every day we traveled on the go train into Toronto and you know we actually participated in different forms of catechesis classes uh, with as I said with people all over the world on the Saturday the 27th we took the train from Burlington into Toronto and then we got on the subway and we went north I can't remember what station we actually got off at but I what I do remember is the Allen Parkway was completely closed and we walked 10 kilometers up the Allen Parkway to Downsview Park, where 800,000, 800,000 young people had gathered. And we spent the night singing and dancing and playing games, all waiting for Sunday morning for the Pope to arrive. Now, as wonderful as sleeping out in the stars can be, it poured rain all night. It was cold, it was yucky, and I woke up with a frog on my head. It wasn't pleasant. But the experience was breathtaking. And I remember once it was all over, um, thinking to myself, uh, hopefully next time I can go as a participant and not a leader. Because technically a young adult was up to the age of 39, and I was only 32 at the time, so I thought maybe I could go. Because unfortunately, when you're a leader, you miss out on things, you know. I had a couple days where I had to miss because I had either a sick youth or some sort of teenage drama. So I had to stay behind. The point to this story is that the theme for that festival for World Youth Day in 2002 was Matthew 5, 13 to 20. This gospel. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. So as I was sitting at home this week trying to write my sermon, I remember it was Pope John Paul who came that year. So I tried to see if I could find his sermon to reflect on it. 
Unfortunately, I couldn't find his actual sermon. But what I did find was his letter that announced what the theme of World Youth Day was going to be in 2002. And I have to say, I was in awe, because even 20 years later, 20, uh, 21 years later, the letter stirred some emotions. So basically, I'm stealing from Pope John Paul today. I've made it a little bit more Anglican and a little bit more me, but it is, I'm starting it as the actual letter. My dear friends, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. This is the theme I have chosen for today. The images of salt and light used by Jesus are rich in meaning and complement each other. In ancient times, salt and light were seen as essential elements of life. You are the salt of the earth. One of the main functions of salt is to season food, to give it taste and flavor. This image can remind us that through our baptism, our, our whole being is profoundly changed. We are seasoned with new life, a new life with Christ. That salt, which keeps our Christian identity intact, even in this secularized world, is the sign of grace, the grace of our baptism. It is through our baptism that we, we come into the body of Christ. We begin to understand who we are in Christ and whose we are, God's own. We begin to live into Christ and become capable of responding to his call to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. When Paul wrote to the Roman church, he urged them to show clearly that their way of living and thinking was different than anybody else. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what the will of God is, what is good and what is pleasing and perfect. For a long time, salt was also used to preserve food. As the salt of the earth, you are called to preserve the faith, which you have received and pass it on to the, those around you. We are challenged to keep the faith in a very special way. We are encouraged to discover our Christian roots. We are encouraged to learn the church history and to study scripture and to deepen our knowledge of the spiritual traditions that have been given to us. And we are called to follow in the footsteps of our great teachers. We are encouraged to remember that if we wish to be true apostles and great witnesses of the faith for the next generation, then we must stay faithful to God's commandments and the covenant which Jesus made with his own blood. You are the light of the world. One would hope that when Jesus' people heard these words, that they would have realized or looked as light as the great symbol of truth and knowledge. When light fades, it becomes dark, and we can no longer see things clearly in the dark. In the heart of night, sometimes we can feel frightened and insecure, and we impatiently wait for the coming of the dawn. Oh, my dear friends, it is up to you to be the morning watchman, the one who announces the coming of the sun, who announces the light of the world, and who announces the risen Christ. The light which Jesus speaks of in the gospel is the light of faith, God's free gift which enlightens the hearts and clarifies our minds. It is God who said, let the light shine out of darkness, who shine in the heart to give light of the great knowledge of the glory of God is on the face of Christ. That is why the words of Jesus explaining his identity and his mission are so incredibly important. I am the light of the world, Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have light of life. When we are able to have a personal relationship with Christ, the life of Christ washes over us like a new light. That light can set us on a clear new path, and it is a clear path 
that Jesus enables us to look at the world and look at the people around us differently. We are able to be more accepting, more understanding, more loving, more kind. This new clear path with Jesus as the light allows us to enter deeply into the mystery of our faith. In a world that is incredibly secular, it is no wonder that so many people do not believe that God exists. We must let the Gospels and Christ's word be our light and our life. Let Jesus' words allow us to follow in his footsteps, in the footsteps in the, of the disciples. Let us be that big, bright, neon, shining light that you see in the sky, advertising God's love and God's grace. Remember, the scripture said, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a bushel basket. Let your light shine. Just as salt gives flavor to the world and light illuminates in the darkness, so too holiness gives full meaning to life and makes it reflect God's glory. It is now time for us to be missional again. It is time for this diocese and this parish to create new and inventive ways to allow people to hear Christ calling them. As Anglicans, as the Anglican Church, we are called to welcome and invite everyone into our flock. Young, old, rich, poor, straight, gay, non-binary. We are called to invite them to make this community their home, this community their place of communion, and this community their place of prayer. I invite you today and moving forward to study the word of God to let it enlighten your minds and your hearts. Draw strength from the sacramental graces of baptism and the Eucharist. And for those at home, if you are not baptized, don't worry, you can still come for communion here. Come be with Jesus. Every time the Eucharist is offered, we are invited into a relationship with the Lord. Every time we receive the Eucharist, we are invited into a deep, intimate relationship with Christ. And it is through the strength of the Eucharist that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. It is through the strength of the Eucharist that we can become the radiant lights of the risen Christ, that we are reminded that we are children of the light, children of the day. And it is being the salt and light of the world that we can always be able to see and find what is good, right, and true. Amen. <laughs>